This week in theaters, we saw The Last House on the Left. Do the game with us. We chug before every time to see who wins and who will start the review. So let's go. Chug alert. Chug alert. Boop. This is a fresh beer. This is going to suck. You win. I am so full right now. I just ate a bowl of chili. <laughs> oh my god. And a bun. Uh, and a coffee. I'm gonna puke. Okay. Last house on the left. Directed by Dennis. We discussed this. We don't know what if that were two I's, two L's. Here's his name. Yeah, written by Adam Elick. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Elicka. Alika. Alika. Um, Alika, la la Alika. What? <laughs> was he the one who wrote Disturbia and Red Eye? Or no, was Carl that... Ellsworth wrote Disturbia. So the co writer of this, or I guess they were a team, whatever. He probably wrote it more than Adam Alika. <laughs> Starring Sarah Paxton from the Gilmore Girls, was it? What? Really? Yeah, she was on Gilmore Girls. Okay, we'll say that she was. Actually, I don't know that for a fact. I think she's uh, she's like one of those bubblegum teen actresses. I swear to God she, she was, was Oh, no, she was in that movie called Aqua Marine, where she played the mermaid. Remember that? Yeah, but I swear to God, she was the kid on Gilmore Girls. We did not look it up. We should have. Um, Monica Potter was also in this. And I wanted to say... I wanted to bring up the cinematography in this, or the cinematographer. You put cinematography... Um, what, and I think it's uh, a lady, Sharon? Sharon Meyer. 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 <laughs> the only reason I want to bring that up is because this whole movie, for me, was like super zoom. Like, hey, I'm going to get a huge lens and put it on thousand times zoom for every scene. That was a big downfall for me in this movie. I was like... Some scenes, like when it's zoomed up and you're not showing what's going on behind them and stuff, yeah. is good for suspense. And then you go, ah! and you know, and that's supposed to scare you. Everything was so predictable for the scare tactics in this movie. Yeah. It, you got to do a lot more than the classic scene where you're looking at a guy in a car and then zoom out and there's, oh, there, the, how many times has that been done now? It's in like, cinema? It's, it's a horror movie norm, you know? I was like, and everyone like around me was like, oh shit, that truck just hit the cop car. And I was just like, Expected. when's that going to happen? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> and I turned to you, I was like, yeah, I saw that coming from a mile away. But even before they showed the truck, I already saw the truck coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some of the scenes in this movie, like the sadistic scenes, there is a rape scene that mm -hmm. they force, I don't know, like... You almost feel like the little kid that's sitting on the rock. Like, that's how I felt. I think that's how you were supposed to feel. Yeah, so, it's hard to watch any type of rape scene in a movie without feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, if people were laughing, it, it got really serious in the theater. Yeah, the that, whole theater and then, was just like And then about silence. 15 people got up and left. Yeah. yeah Which was I, I was expected, actually, because this is... It's kind of sh funny because, like... People will get up and leave when they see a rape scene in a, in a movie, but they won't get up when they see a torture scene in Saw. Well, some Saul. people... No, I saw a lot of people leave in those movies, too. Though. I didn't. But you, you're, you're expecting that. The way this was, um, like... Oh, man. <laughs> advertised, <laughs> it looked like a horror movie. It's yeah. not really a horror movie. It's more of a unfortunate event movie. Wes Craven did the original. You and I, I, I think it was the first time I ever actually saw the movie, it was in the yeah. airport we were waiting stuck for in, a plane. We were stuck in a Las Vegas airport for 11 hours, and it was one of the movies that I bought when we were in Vegas. So we watched and, it on his laptop, and yeah. we couldn't even get through it because it was so boring. But when I saw the trailer for the remake, I was like, we have to see it because this actually looks good. The trailer shows every kill scene because there's only eight if, characters in yeah, this if, movie. If you've seen the trailer for this movie, you've seen the movie. 
Yes, and I hate when movies do that. You know, especially like comedies when they show the funniest parts of the movie and there's no other funny parts. It's the same thing with a revenge slash horror flick. If you're yeah. showing every death yeah, and like in-depth deaths in the trailer, like the whole microwave scene, everyone's seen that in the trailer, it's like, fuck, <laughs> come on. You know it's coming. You know yeah. what, when we left the theater, I heard a lot of people saying like, that movie was sick and stuff and like, okay. I think it was the ending that made him like come off on a good note, I think. And I'm not going to mention the ending, but... It, because as soon as that happened, everyone just started cheering. Because it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And I think there was a lot of people in the theater kind of thinking like me, like they saw it in the trailer and they knew it was coming. So like, when is it going to, when is it there? When is it there? So and then you finally, it's almost like, and horror movies are a lot like pornos too, because it's all the lead up to the sex or to the like end of sex, I guess. Yep. But that's the same thing with horror movies or movies like this. It's all the lead up to, I want to see, I want to see that mm -hmm. this happen, I want to see that happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, and they left it to the very final before the credits rolled. And it was effective, I thought. Yeah, I didn't think it was effective. Actually, I didn't well, think... Well, I mean, for the whole yes factor of yeah. the people that don't see It's kind of like, movies. yes, he got what he deserved, you know? Yeah, but... I pre-called everything that so was So you're happen. saying it's very predictable? Very predictable. Because of the trailer or just because of it was just predictable? It's a very it narrow storyline, lacking on any development in any way, shape, or form. There's yeah. no character development. There is no, like, nothing like that. Yeah, I thought, I thought this movie didn't really work for me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of movies like this. Like I said before, um, like it's very sadistic. It's very uh, hard to watch at times. And there's a lot of movies that um, came to mind when I was watching this. Um, you mentioned before that it was based on a movie that Wes Craven was basing his movie on, which is Igmar Bergman's The Virgin Spring. Yes. And out of all the movies that deal with the subject matter, it is definitely by far the best one because it's an art house movie and it's supposed to be like that. Wes Craven, when he did his, I think the reason why we were watching it and we were so bored is because Wes Craven was trying to mimic Igmar Bergman's kind of slow, anticipated style. And it just, when I, when I watched The Last House on the Left for the first time, the Wes Craven one, I was just, I, I couldn't get through it. But at the same time, uh, like I, I think their main goal when they were making this remake was to take the original and just make it look better and appeal to more of a mass audience, which it does. It does it, it, look that a lot... That theater was packed. Yeah, and it does look a lot better, but the trailer is very misleading. It was, it was effective in that it got people to turn away. Exactly. Like, you got the implied intentions. I looked away just to see what other people's reactions to this were, how everyone else was being affected by this ridiculous scene that was happening, mm -hmm. and it happened for like four minutes or something. It yeah. seemed like way too long, but, and I think that m made it feel more real. Yeah. As soon as that happened and they got into uh, like the later half of the second act, where the parents were starting to you know do their thing, it kind of took a little bit of a ridiculous turn. Because <laughs> you have, like, the first half of the movie is very, very, very serious, and at times very controversial, especially, you know, what you're seeing on the screen. And then it gets into, like, silly horror movie shit. Yeah, and then all of a sudden there's a freaking hammer to the head and... Hand in the garburetor. <laughs> oh, oh, the hand I in the know. garburetor. Dude, when, I, when that was happening, I was just like... Ah. I know, that's... <laughs> everyone seriously does not ever want that to happen to them. Oh, and they I hate, I hate when I get shit stuck in my garburetor. Like, one time I got a bottle cap stuck in the garburetor, and every time I turn it on, I just like, and they make this really loud noise, and I just, I couldn't bring myself tongs. to sticking tongs. my... Yeah, tongs, tongs, exactly. I couldn't, like, put oh, my hand no, in there. No, no. It's, it's one of my biggest fears. Yes, mine oh, too. Oh. And they touched base on that in Final Destination 2, but nothing became of it. Yeah, Which yeah, it, yeah, it was that. a tease. It was a tease, yeah. but this is not a tease. It's full on grinding a hand, and then you see it all after. Oh, that guy gets it so bad. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So what do you think? What do you give it? Uh, I give it one and a half bottles out of Ooh. six. That's pretty bad. It was a bad movie. Cool. Well, I, I was going to give it like two. <laughs> Not much better. <laughs> I know. If you think about the scale of one or zero, I guess, because you just gave a movie zero, yep. to six, one and a half and two are pretty close. She was trying too hard. Cool. Last house on the left. Don't fucking see it. Go to the last house on the right. <laughs> Way better. <laughs>